Hey, what's up guys, Dan here. Today we're gonna to take a look at some of the gear that's in my photography bag that isn't cameras and lenses. So this is my EDC, my everyday carry kit for photography. Now, cameras and lenses, they vary depending on the situation, depending on the subject that I'm shooting. But the stuff that I carry around in my EDC is universally useful for me. Um, it's a little bit specific to my preference for outdoor adventure, wildlife photography, that kind of stuff. But this is the stuff that is always in my camera bag. And when I'm choosing a bag for the day, depending on the situation, I tend to carry this stuff around in a smaller bag, either this one or another couple that we'll look at. And I just kind of move this around to every bag. This has all the important stuff in it. I know that if I add a camera and a lens, to this kit, then I have everything that I need to go shooting. So I pick the camera and the lens based on the situation of the day, and then I grab everything that's in here. And this is gonna be the stuff that keeps me going, batteries, memory cards, and all these other little accessories. So I'm gonna lay everything out on the table and we'll have a real close look at this. All right, so I've got it all laid out here clearly on the table. And what I'm gonna do is pick up each piece. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what kind of things these are, why I've chosen them, and then I'll remove them from the frame, uh, just put them out of the way as we kind of work through the table here. So um, I'm just gonna start at the top here. This is uh, simply batteries for my camera. This is a small pouch that's from uh, Think Tank Photo, and it's just their DSLR battery holder. I've got uh, LPE6 batteries from Canon in here for my 5D Mark III and my 7D Mark II. I've also got a spare battery for my uh, head torch. That fits in there quite nicely. They make various uh, camera battery holders in different shapes and sizes to suit pro size batteries. Uh, you can get ones that are half the size just for two and even one that just holds one battery and a memory card as well. So that's from Think Tank Photo. I should also mention there is a full list in the description of the video on YouTube here of all this gear. And there's also a, an accompanying blog post, uh, which is linked there as well. So if, you, if I'm moving too fast for you to catch exactly what these items are, there'll be a proper list below or just visit the blog post. So DSLR battery holder four, this one is called from Think Tank Photo. Uh, next up is another small Think Tank photo battery case. This is uh, for AA batteries. Now, uh, I've usually got something that requires AA or AAA batteries. AAAs will fit in here as well. Uh, so I, I tend to carry around a selection of the uh, Panasonic Eneloop rechargeable batteries. They hold their charge really well for years, in fact, so you don't have to worry about them being dead when you get them out. And I always like to have uh, a small number of those with me because you know, they're just kind of universally usable, uh, useful things for radios and uh, flashes and remote triggers, stuff like that. So this is the Think Tank Photo AA battery holder. Um, around about 10 bucks for this. And I, I actually have several of these. I think they're really awesome. Next up on the top here, uh, we have just a, a notebook. This is from Field Notes. Uh, it's called their Expedition Book. It's kind of uh, it's kind of like graph paper, but just with little dots on it. It's kind of hard to see probably in the video. It's waterproof. Uh, it's tear resistant. You can't tear these pages. You can write in the rain. Um, it's just a really, really rugged book. That's why it's called the Expedition Book. And a lot of people ask me what it's, you know, I've got my iPhone with me. Why do I carry around a notebook? It doesn't make sense. Well, for me, um, I just, I remember things better when I write them down. I don't even always need to refer to them afterwards, but it's the process of writing things down that often uh, helps me to remember something. So sometimes I'm taking notes, sometimes I'm jotting down ideas for lighting setups or uh, things like that, but oftentimes it's just a way to help me remember things. Um, I pair it with, uh, this is a space pen from Fisher, um, kind of a famous little collapsible pen that was designed to be used uh, on the space shuttle, so it's pressurized uh, cartridges. It'll write upside down, underwater, you know, and it's also tiny, so I think they pair really well together. Um, you know, each to their own on that one. I know a lot of people just use their phones for that kind of stuff these days, but uh, it actually really helps me. Uh, quickly, memory cards. Of course, I'm gonna have some memory cards. Uh, I tend to use these Lexar professional ones. Um, next up, this is the TFA01 pocket tripod from Really Right Stuff. And it has the micro ball head on it. So the micro ball is just this little uh, adjustable thing with a quick release clamp on it. Um, 
super, super lightweight ball clamp, but amazingly, this thing will hold the weight of a professional camera with something like a 70 to 200 on it. Uh, it has incredible gripping power, so you don't need to worry about, uh, you know, creep uh, with a heavy lens combo on this thing. Um, I just find this is really handy, setting up a little flash on it, stick my GoPro on it, stick a camera on it in those places where it says no tripods, but you can often kind of sneak this into your pocket. Uh, really, really sturdy solution for uh, kind of just an, an emergency tripod and just one of those things that I find ends up having a lot of usage uh, when you're not quite expecting it to. So I always like to travel with this thing. So again, that's the TFA-01 with a micro ball head from Really Right Stuff. Um, small medical kit, you know, this depends on the kind of photography you do. I tend to be outdoors, uh, often away from civilization. So some kind of medical kit is, uh, kind of important for me. This is from a company called Adventure Medical Kits. They make a ton of different kinds of kits. And this is the kit three, although I will say that it's heavily customized. It comes in a super lightweight waterproof pouch, which is kind of what I wanted. And it gave me the starting point for my kit, but I have adapted it over time to include additional items in there, uh, some painkillers and just, you know, specific things that I've found are the kind of things that I end up needing. So it's a great starting point, these uh, adventure medical kits, and then you can kind of add things to them that suit your situation. So I've added in like some waterproof matches in there and some, uh, some small kind of emergency supplies as well. Uh, and I've just added on a couple of, uh, these are called S beaners, I think from uh, Night Eyes, and that just clips it to the keychain inside any of my camera bags, make sure it's safe. Next up, uh, the memory card holder. This is called the House of Cards from Mindshift Gear. Very similar to their sister company, Think Tank Photos, uh, popular card uh, holders. Just rolls out like this. Um, I've got all kinds of different cards. Um, I've got, you know, other things like this little Lexar uh, USB micro SD reader in there as well. I like this one because it has the elastic loop. Some of them have Velcro or hook and loop and that makes a noise when you open them. This one is silent. So if I need to do something in a situation like uh, trying to be really quiet when there's wildlife around and I need to change cards, then the elastic works really well for me. Spot for some business cards and things in the back there as well. Love this thing, the house of cards from Mindshift Gear. Next up, uh, Goal Zero Venture 30. I've reviewed this on the website before. This is a battery pack with two USB ports in it. Um, it comes with a built-in USB cable as well with a micro USB charging. It has a super bright uh, LED on here as well, which is kind of good for emergencies. And you can get enough power out of this thing to recharge my phone about two or three times, recharge my tablet. Uh, you can even buy adapters to recharge my cameras. Uh, you can certainly plug in my Sony cameras directly into this thing. And I just, I just use this thing all the time. Now here is a thing called the Lighter Life Mini. This is, let's plug this in. This is a USB lantern, which is chainable. So you can chain a bunch of these together. Uh, I just kind of like this. You know, if you're doing outdoor photography, you're going to be out in the dark at some point, whether you're waiting for sunrise or packing up after sunset. Um, this is just, I find it kind of handy for lighting up the inside of my camera bags. You can hang it on the underside of my tripod and put the camera bag beneath it. You know, I use it in my tent. I use it in my car while I'm, you know, sleeping in the car, waiting for the sun to rise or something like that. I just, it's pretty lightweight and that's something that I've just started carrying around quite a lot recently. It's got a bit of a adjustability to it as well, but you can move this um, around to adjust the spread of the light. And, uh, you know, I think they're around $30 or something. I found it. Uh, pretty good value um, and it'll run itself for you know something like over 100 hours off this Venture 30 pack here so a really cool little setup there. Binoculars. So these are Zeiss Terra ED 10 by 25 foldable pocket binoculars. I uh, mainly use these for spotting and observing wildlife but also they're good from a safety point of view if you're trying to plan a route uh, if you're looking for lines in the backcountry while you're skiing. They are rubberized, rugged, waterproof. 
the knob on them is large enough that you can actually uh, use them with gloves on really easily. Obviously you can see how it folds like this so I can easily fit it in my pocket. And being Zeiss, of course, um, they are not the cheapest ones by any means, but I think the price is really good uh, at around the sort of $400 mark, I think. And, you know, certainly something that's gonna last you a really long time. And optically they are brilliant. They're super, super sharp. So uh, I can't always have large binoculars with me because I have so much other camera gear when I'm doing wildlife photography with big super telephoto lenses anyway. So this I find is a really great solution just to fit in uh, my pocket. So that's the Terra ED 10 by 25 from Zeiss. Uh, Bose wireless sound sport earbuds. Uh, this is a really personal choice, I guess. It's, it's not really related to photography so much, but it's always in my kit. Uh, whenever I'm shooting on my own, hiking around or something like that, uh, I always have something in my ears, usually a podcast or an audio book, uh, sometimes some music. And I just love the, I love the ability to have wireless Bluetooth headphones. Uh, the sound quality of these has got to the point where they really are very, very good. And uh, yeah, you know, just taking the backpack on and off all the time, if you have cables running around, then I always used to get tangled up and just kind of a pain in the ass. So I really like these Bluetooth uh, wireless ones from Bose and they are weatherproof as well. So you can get them wet, it's not a big deal. A headlamp, uh, this is the Tika R Plus from Petzl. Uh, has, you know, it has a red light on it, a red LED, which I think is important for people that do nighttime photography. Um, the, it won't affect your night vision so much when you're using a red LED. So if you are trying to do star photography, then that's really great. Also, if there's other people around you, they will really thank you for using a red LED and not screwing up their night vision as well. It's USB chargeable. So I can charge this up from my Venture 30 pack, uh, Goal Zero pack that we saw before and that makes it really awesome. That's really the key feature for me is that it's USB chargeable. I try and have as many things chargeable via USB as possible. And uh, yeah, you know, this is an absolute must have item for uh, outdoor photographers. Next up, uh, what do we do next? This is, this is the 1.4 teleconverter from Canon. So this will, um, this will extend my focal range by 1.4 times. I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about lenses, and that's, I meant specific lenses there. Whenever I pack a pack with, uh, pack a pack, <laughs> pack a bag um, with lenses, there's gonna be some kind of longer telephoto lens in there, whether it's a 70 to 200, a 100 to 400, 400, 200 to 400, there's gonna be one of those lenses there, in which case I will always take this extender. I find it's really useful for adding a little bit of extra reach and uh, there's nothing to be scared of when using the 1.4 extender, especially this Mark III version. Really these days they have got very good and if you know how to use them well, then uh, you can get fantastic results. Many of my favorite long lens images have been taken by incorporating an extender in there just to get that little bit of extra reach. So this will always be in my bag. Next up, uh, we actually have an extension tube. So an extension tube kind of looks like an extender except there's no optics in it. So this is purely a spacer that goes between the lens and the camera and it shortens the minimum focus distance. So it allows you to focus much, much closer and you can get macro-like images from non-macro lenses. So if you take your 50 millimeter lens, which already focuses pretty close and then you stick this on it, now you can get really close. So it's great for small wildlife, it's great for plants, uh, it's great on a super telephoto lens as well when you're trying to fill the frame with a small animal. Um, so an extension tube is, it's a really lightweight accessory, especially this 12 millimeter one, it doesn't take up much room, especially if you leave the caps off it. And there's really no need to have caps on it because there is no optics in this anyway. So it's a really, you know, just one of those things that I find super useful. So that's a 12 millimeter extension tube from Canon. Uh, next, we have a look at some remotes. So I have two remotes in my bag normally. The cable release one. So this is just simple, cable it to the camera, press the button, it fires the shutter. You know, always good to uh, get really sharp shots. You know, if you're using a tripod, 
with a camera on the top and then you put this on there. Now when you're doing long exposures, you just press the button and you don't introduce vibrations into the camera by using that. I will use this 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time. This is the Canon RC6 infrared remote. You can see it's tiny. It takes a little tiny watch battery and this actually has a switch on the back to allow you to engage the self timer remotely on Canon cameras. So this is great for uh, taking self portraits. Sometimes I find myself taking portraits of myself at work uh, to try and use on the blog or social media and things like that. So if I want to set a two second timer to get a shot of me doing something, then I use this tiny little thing here and I can just press it. And then I've got two seconds to pop this back in my pocket and get back to uh, get back to work to take the photo. And it's also great just for capturing group shots if you want to be in the photo as well. And uh, you know, all Canon's cameras have infrared receivers on them. So you just have to use this little button. And as you can see, it's really tiny. Next up, tools. This is the Really Right Stuff MTX tool. This has, in the back of it, you unscrew it, and inside is all of the hex tools that you could ever need for working on your tripod and ball head and all that kind of support equipment. Um, I use Really Right Stuff uh, ball heads and tripods anyway, so of course this is kind of the perfect solution. But whatever you're using, Gitzo, uh, Manfrotto, they all have very similar uh, hex screws and things like that and it actually comes with way more than you need may, way more than you can fit in here so you kind of divide up exactly which ones you need for your system and it has a threaded top on here as well so you can actually stick a camera on there or uh, extend a tripod with it because it has a threaded bottom as well it's kind of a really great little multi-purpose tool then i have my typical multi-tool uh, this is a leatherman this one is called the signal it's got all your standard things like uh, a knife and pliers and stuff like that. But the Signal is a really outdoor kind of adventure specific one. It actually contains a fire lighter, uh, as in a fire steel that you strike. And it also has a knife sharpener and an emergency whistle built into it. So, you know, I think a multi-tool is a great thing to have in your bag. You never know when some of these things are going to come in handy. But uh, for outdoor and adventure photography, I really actually like this Signal one because it's kind of designed for, uh, you know, adventurous outdoor pursuits. So that's the Leatherman Signal. This is the InReach Explorer from Delorme. It's in a little case right now, but that's basically what it is. This is a satellite communication device. So if I'm out in a place where I don't have cell phone service, I can use this to text someone via satellite instead. So it'll just show up on their phone as a normal text message, uh, but it will also include my GPS location. So if I have any kind of a problem, I can also hit the SOS button to summon help to my location, but I can also use it just to send text messages to friends and family to let them know I'm okay, let them know where I'm camping for the night, uh, things like that. So it's just kind of a peace of mind thing. I'm often out on my own. So, you know, this just really gives me that peace of mind that if I have some kind of trouble, I have a way to communicate with people without a cell phone and it will send them my GPS coordinates. So this is really cool. It is a subscription service once you've bought the device, but I uh, believe the subscription services are really great values. So I think it costs me about $12 a month to be subscribed to their service. Um, and I do recommend this little, uh, additional case that you can buy with it. It has a clip on the back and a nice big chunky carabiner. So you can just clip it to the back of your pack. So that's the InReach Explorer. And finally, this camera strap. I've talked about this a lot on the blog before because I'm not really a camera strap guy. I'll rarely actually have one on my camera because I'm often using a tripod or a gimbal but it would be silly to go somewhere without a strap altogether because there are definitely situations where you need one. So this super lightweight uh, strap from Peak Design is the perfect solution for me. It's called the Leash. And it's called the Leash because uh, you also have this option to use the quick release point halfway down it and just create this loop in here. So you can actually leash your camera to yourself or to another object. So that's really handy if you're uh, you know, hanging off the side of a bridge taking a photo and you're worried about dropping it, you can tether the camera to your belt loop, to the bridge, or anything like that. You can use it to tether your camera to yourself if you're shooting out of a helicopter. I've done that before. 
uh, or out of a plane window, something like that. Um, it's just kind of a really great multi-purpose device and then it really, it takes up next to no room in my camera bag. You can stuff it in your pocket and it uses quick release uh, anchors, which I actually have on a ton of different things. So you might have noticed these little red things that are, I've got them on the RC6 remote here. I've got them on my Zeiss binoculars as well. So if I decide I want to go with the, the strap on the binoculars, then I can just clip them on real quick like that. And then I can transfer that strap back to the camera. Um, you know, all kinds of different ways to use that. So there you go. I think that's everything in my kind of everyday kit. Like I said, that stuff is always with me in my camera bag. Cameras and lenses, they change based on the shooting situation, but this is the stuff that you'll find in there. Um, let's take a quick look at how I carry this stuff now. Okay, I've got three different bags that I kind of use to, to transport this stuff. Um, mostly I switch them up depending on which bag I'm using because you can see these are all slightly different shapes and different materials. They have different sort of malleability to them. So uh, depending on the size and shape of the camera bag, I find that you know different ones work for different days. But let's take a look at all three of these. This one is the Field Pouch from Peak Design. Um, it's super slim. If you want it to be slim, it has the quick release things on the back so you can turn it into a small shoulder bag. You can put it on your belt. Uh, it's kind of expandable because it has Velcro that you know you can either do all the way down the bottom here or you can just do it at the top and then you've got much more volume. Inside there are one, two, three, four, five, six small pockets and then this one main pocket. Uh, a couple of these pockets are zippered as well um, and really, really well hidden. Really rugged kind of wax canvas material to it, um, reinforced bottom to it. This is just a really cool uh, all-purpose bag and I have several of these. I actually, uh, you know, here's, here's another one here that I have all my microphone cables in uh, and small microphones and I, I have a lot of these little uh, field pouches from Peak Design. I use them for different scenarios. So that's one option for carrying all the EDC stuff. The next is a super lightweight bag from uh, Outdoor Research and I think this is just called the Organizer. It's made from that kind of really, really lightweight nylon material. This is the medium sized one. Uh, we have some mesh zippered pockets and a bunch of, uh, you know, three or four other small zippered pouches. And this is really uh, the ultra light solution. So if I really want to save some weight for a long hike, I might choose this one. I also find it because it's kind of, it's really, really um, foldable that I can jam this into smaller spaces and it fits in the top pocket of much smaller bags as well. So uh, if I need something that can go a bit smaller or lighter, then I'll often use this uh, Outdoor Research Medium Organizer. And this is the Think Tank Speed Changer V2. So this is a bigger option that is really designed to go on a belt uh, as part of their belts, Think Tank's belt system but I actually mostly have it uh, within other backpacks. You can see it's got more of a cubic design to it. So it tends to fit in those backpacks where you've got a bit more space and you've got all the padded dividers and I just kind of cut out a space um, that's big enough to fit this in there. Zippered pocket on the front, two elastic pockets. Then there is this organizer pocket in here which has uh, small dividers and all kinds of other things. So three or four other little pockets within that one. Um, and then in here, you can kind of fold this back. And here we have a bit more space. This obviously has a much more room than the other ones. So I can actually fit uh, some lenses in here as well. So I tend to stuff most of the EDC stuff in the front, and then I can actually fit uh, a lens in here as well. I've added uh, Peak Design quick release anchors to this. So I can incorporate that shoulder strap as well to turn this into a small shoulder bag. Uh, which is often kind of handy for event photography. If I'm just carrying around uh, one lens and one camera, then I can sling this over my shoulder uh, with all the stuff in there and then another lens or two in here as well. So this is, gives me a little bit more space uh, if I need it. So yeah, boy, that turned out to be quite a long video. I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, you know, I think this stuff is, it's not gonna change very often. This is kind of the same 
stuff that I've been using for years. So it's really hopefully a pretty universal kit, especially for someone that's interested in the kind of photography that I do, which is kind of outdoor adventure, uh, wildlife stuff. So that's my EDC uh, kit for photography. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. It did go on a little bit long, sorry about that. There was a lot of stuff in the kit and I wanted to make sure that I covered everything in detail. Now, uh, remember on YouTube, head to the description below the video and you'll see a long list of all of these items. So if I brushed over things really quickly, you won't have to miss them. There's also a link to the accompanying blog post that goes with this and that explains a few of the items in more detail. And again, it has that long list of everything. And it also has an annotated picture where everything's numbered and labeled. So you can make sure you find everything. So yeah, hope that was useful. Like the video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out and subscribe to the channel. We'll have plenty more stuff like this in the future. Thanks for watching.